don't usually pop up in the middle of the day, but I need to, I'd love to share a letter with y'all. My nephew, I did share a while ago, inmate's confession, inmate's testimony, I think it was. But see the video, see the video. I shared it because my, uh, my nephew's in a federal prison. Uh, he just got a 14-year sentence. And uh, this is my basement, my workbench, so don't think you're in the, <laughs> the doomsday dungeon. But uh, in the process of moving some tools around and doing some projects and some things. But I really uh, would like to put the address, I guess, in the description of the video. Because I, I, I don't know why, but ever since I shared the first video with you all, I really felt in my spirit, you know, that he, I hope and pray that, you know, his conversion, his, his, his uh, testimony is, is uh, sincere. But I really feel like, you know, we need to, I would like to encourage him. And I hope that you out there, I mean, if you have a free time to, to maybe just write him a letter. You brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, you folks who are in recovery, you folks that have been through hell and back, folks that have, you know, been in prison and survived prison. You know, he's a, a very young man. His birthday's coming up in November. I'm not asking for money or charity or anything like that, but it would be nice if, if, especially for you folks out there who are in prison, spent most of their life in prison. He started going to jail when he was about 10 years old, and he's almost, he's in his early 30s, so he spent a good portion, of over 50% of his life behind bars. And this last one was a federal offense, so it's a really good stretch. And uh, like I said, that's, that's his address there, but... Uh, can't really read it. I'll leave it in the description. But I want to share the letter with you. I really think um, it, I, the reason I want to share it with you is because it, it, it gives me hope, you know, and I hope that it helps you and gives you hope, you know, as, as uh, especially someone who's uh, who's behind bars. So to further ado, I'm going to read you the letter here. Here's the letter. Ah, oh, dear Uncle Joe, man, you made my day that you wrote me. Man, you know, he finally got my letter. So much to say to you. So first tell Luke that's my son early birthday. I will be 33 on November 20th. And congrats on the find for the pickup. We told him about the army truck. And send me pics if you can. He said I get 500, for Mar 500 minutes are free to call. But for now I'm in the hole. Basically the hole. The gang, a gang tried to stab me, so I won't be here long. So I keep you posted where I go. Did you get anything in the mail from me beside the still water? I sent you a bunch of stuff, but it's it's a great church all about uh, King James devotionals and great support handling out work. <clears throat> like I said, he, he's been in jail most of his life, so he struggles with his literacy, as you can see. And no, I haven't received anything. So a lot of times prisons do is prisons open everything and they take a lot of the stuff that's sent because, you know, you pretty much lose your rights when you go behind bars. <clears throat> uh, and they support handling out God's work. Man, speaking of God, I read a Bible, I read a book called Rebel Without a Cause, a godly book about Franklin Graham. Um, read it. Plus, I wrote his good company, Good Samaritan's Purse. That the president of North Carolina, they wrote a book and sent it to my parents for free. Plus, they 5-2 Bible reading plan with information on free Bible correspondence courses. Check it out. Bad to the bone. My faith increases and I'm not turning back on God now. Law is love and one being with the Spirit. So my focus, I will be embrace the moment. Not looking back on my past, the Samaritan's Purse said, My experiences in jail will be useful in my walk with Christ in time to come. He has promised to strengthen you when temptation comes. 2 Corinthians 10.13 For this to say to you and the rest of the world. 2 Corinthians 5.16.18 Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him, thus no longer. Therefore, anyone is Christ. He is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And he goes on to say, I am Lazarus, risen from the dead. Jesus has saved me. I am new in God. Well, I love you, Uncle Joe, and God bless to you and your family. Hey, check this out. Ask this around and yourself. It's a good question. Now, if you can remember this, Answer this question when you write to him. 
Now, it's a good test, and of course you will say, yeah, I know, because I asked the question, and you will find the answer to the end of this letter. Does God remember your sin? That's his question. Well, show, I'll show you the answer in the end. Anyway, I got radio from my good friend, Cal, testing Tyler, and he knows my situation. He became close to me and been watching over me, and we have been having fellowship together. He was trying to get home on compassion release, which I needed, my dad's medical records. Uh, he's trying to get out on compassion release, my nephew, and um, he's not having too much luck because his dad really isn't that sick. So that just goes with the learning and growing in the process. Uh, I can go home early to take care of my dad. Now I will fill out my motion and send everything to court, but my mom shut me down. I don't know why. Well, anyhow, please keep me in my prayer and contact with me. You know, I think the mom set him down a lot because... We have to be accountable and we have to take responsibility at some point in our lives for our actions. And I don't think that he's done that. And every time he's gotten his trouble, his mother's pulled him out of the fire. You know, he, she, I think she really needs to let him sit and sweat this one out. And I know it's a long stretch and he's in a dangerous place, but so many people have, have grown, gone on from prison to live amazing, successful, productive lives. So many, there's testimonies all over this TikTok that'll tell you that people have done that. So I think it's important for her as a mother not to love him to death, but love him at a distance and love him enough that he gets better and he gets well and that he truly, truly, truly changes his heart and his mind because it's what it needs, a new heart and a new mind. Talked about that this morning. And me and my sister don't talk anymore. It's been two years. I guess it's for the best, but I pray for her. Well, my old man ain't doing too well. Pray for him. The VA can't help him out. Maybe you, maybe you, maybe you might know anyone can help them. Well, Uncle Joe, I love you dearly. I miss you guys dearly. Like I said, send me some pics of the family truck, Flo, and the pickup truck, which is my '66. Go Eagles, go Phillies, go Fires. Man, I'm only I'm the only Philly guy here. Plus, I miss PA in South Jersey. PA was a good spot to live. Plus, I already live in Philly, so I miss the North North bad. South sucks. Left out loud. Well, I should be home in 2030, 2030, and this is 2024. What a bleak future, but you heard what he wrote, you heard his letter, you heard his faith. Even in the midst of the struggle and this trial and the storm, this young man has found God. This young man has found Christ. He's holding on to the hem of Christ's garment. He's holding on to Christ's hand. The wind's blowing. They've tried to stab him. He's in the hole. And this is his second letter that he's written. He's already been in there a little over a year. Um, I'm out of here. He's getting rid of federal inmates. If if a certain political opponent gets in the, in the play, which he's holding on again for hope to get out early, which I don't think it's going to happen. So that will be great. We'll keep in touch. Plus, I'll be in contact with Pastor Kev. I let Andrew. I know I wrote him also. I love you dearly. Read the back of the paper for the answer. So now here's the answer to that question. The question they asked is, does God remember your sin? Of course you might say, well, yeah, guess he, what he don't. In the Old Testament, Isaiah 43, 25, I, even I am who blots out your transgression for my own sake, I will not remember your sins. So then go to the New Testament, Hebrews 10, 17, that he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. Praise God. For example, you might make your wife mad and then she lets it go down the road and then she brings it back up. But for God, it's like I don't know what you're talking about. I think that's amazing. I'm heavy in my Bible and God showing me a lot. I don't read I if I don't read the Bible I feel off balance. God is going to get me through the storm. God bless and have a blessed day. Love always. So I really needed to share with you that. I needed to share that with you and I'm gonna put the address down in the my video cut off. Just know that pray for him. Write him a letter, encourage him, send him some paper too if you can. And know that God is faithful in the storm and that God is, is hope. God is just. He'll be encouraged today. Look for his address, send him a letter, introduce yourself, tell him your story. Let's, let's lift this young man up, encourage him and fill his heart with hope. God bless. Thanks to everyone. Have a great day.